In this third video, we're going to learn about how you or anyone can help monitor birds and how you can help restore their habitat. But first, let's learn a bit about the history of Vesper Meadow, a place where Oregon Vesper Sparrows build nests and raise their young. Well, the story of Vesper Meadow of the land is not too unlike any other meadow um, in Southwest Oregon, where in the last few thousand years, they were managed by the native people, in this case, Latgawa and Tequilma, also Klamath and Shasta, um, different groups would come up to this kind of high meadow to collect food, to manage for native plants like camas, uh, to hunt uh, deer and elk, and um, for many, many other plants that are food and medicine. And then about 200 years ago, settlers who came from Europe um, had a big impact on the land. They started to displace the native people, uh, they started to change the landscape, and the primary use in a lot of these meadows has been for cattle and sometimes sheep. So here, let's take a look at some of the changes that have occurred at Vesper Meadow and some of the projects we have going to help restore the Vesper Sparrow habitat. All right, well, when we consider the Vesper Sparrow's habitat, uh, they are ground nesters, as we've been talking about. And you can see there's been a big change in the meadow over the years. Um, we looked at maps and we've talked to previous landowners and it's a, largely the same story throughout the region where in the last 200 years there's been a lot of cattle grazing and the grasses that the cows feed on have changed over time. People have brought in grasses that are not native, that are not natural to this region. But here at Vesper Meadow, we're restoring native grasses, restoring uh, native flowers, and things that have evolved here for thousands and thousands of years. So we have Romer's fescue here. It's a type of bunch grass. You can see why it's named that. It grows in bunches, small bunch, larger bunch. These we just planted about two years ago. Um, you can see the stock here where the seeds grow. They've already fallen off um, earlier this summer. But the main difference when you look at a bunch of bunch grasses together is that because they grow in clumps, it leaves space in between them, places that Vesper sparrows might scratch for seeds. Um, they like the clumpiness because that's kind of where they build their nest, up against clumps of grass or shrubs. And so this is their kind of more natural habitat um, in bunch grasses. And so by comparison, uh, some of the grasses that were introduced um, uh, in our region and specifically at Vesper Meadow are not bunch grasses. So these grasses here that are better as cow feed um, are detrimental to the natural habitat for multiple reasons. For one, you can see that it grows very densely all over and so this may, may could potentially make it more difficult for Vesper Sparrows to navigate and um, get through areas. It could affect the way that they interact with their predators, um, predators that might include raptors, birds of prey like red-tailed hawks, um, or coyotes that like to hang out in the meadow. And so that element has changed their cover. So we know uh, that in the past there were more Vesper Sparrows and that there was more native grass and flowers. Um, and so here at Vesper Meadow we've been working on restoration of the native flora. And of course this is not only helpful for Vesper Sparrows, this is also helpful for pollinators like butterflies and bees. Um, and also for foods that people have eaten here for thousands of years. So together with volunteers, we um, have been doing some experiments in restoration on killing off the non-native grass. You can see here we have a lot of the meadow foxtail that we just talked about. Uh, and this entire summer, we had this black tarp, this really thick black tarp, laid out on the ground to smother the grass and prevent it from growing. And this is like an alternative to using an herbicide, so chemical free. And you can see the result here 
um, the grass didn't grow very well and we worked with volunteers to rake out the roots and then planted seeds. Here we are, we have um, a dozen different types of flower and grass seeds that we've collected this summer with volunteers. It smells so good, we've got some mint, there's some um, yarrow, cinquefoil, lomatium, buckwheat, uh, clover, yampa, Idaho fescue, and we're seeding this area that has been tarped all summer. So we'll have to check back in next spring and see what grasses and flowers come up. We've also planted some shrubs, some manzanita and elderberry. They're caged over here. And these are native food plants, but they're also good for birds as cover, things to hide, uh, hide behind from predators, to land on lower branches. Uh, and create like a diversity in the types of plants that the birds have. Now that we've learned how restoring native plants can provide habitat and food for native birds, let's learn how you or anyone can help efforts to monitor native birds by becoming a community scientist and using the awesome online website eBird Northwest. So community science is a really great way to have the community engage with science for the sake of education. So you can participate in science directly, learn about the scientific process, learn about collecting data. And on the other side, it's really useful to scientists to have more data. A great way for anyone to become involved with a Vesper Sparrow or any bird sort of research is to use the community science platform eBird. All you have to do is make a free account online uh, it's also an app you can put on your smartphone and at ebird.org it organizes all the bird sightings that you've made so you submit the list of birds after you go bird watching and um, you can also use it before you go bird watching so if you're in the classroom and you're about to take a field trip and you want to see what birds am i going to see at this park or in my schoolyard uh, you can go to explore data and click on it and either look for the place and the time of year and get a list of all the birds that people have seen uh, before you, which is a helpful way to learn what birds are in your backyard. So also under the explore button, you can look for hotspots. These are places where people like to go birding, where there's a lot of different types of birds and just generally are good places uh, to watch birds. So Vesper Meadow is a hot spot on eBird. We have over 120 species that have been found here. We encourage you to come here on your field trip and look for as many birds as you can find, maybe find some that we haven't found before. And here we keep a good uh, list of all that data. Also super helpful in eBird, you can go and look for certain species. In this case, I'm looking at the Oregon Vesper Sparrow and it has a little bit of information about it. Large drabs, streaky sparrow of grasslands. Uh, it pulls in the data of all the sightings that people have made on eBird and makes a map of its range where it lives throughout Oregon and Washington. It also has a calendar and shows when people have found it in Oregon and Washington. So just April through September when it's in its breeding season. Uh, you can listen to video and audio of it, and you can also see all the photos that people have submitted of the Vesper Sparrow with their observations. In this third video, we learned about eBird Northwest and several ways that we can use it to help collect scientific data or to just learn about birds. We also learned about historical changes, changes in who used or uses the lands or Oregon Vesper Sparrow's nest. And we learned that what people use the land for can change the plants and animals of that place. Lastly, we learned about restoration techniques and how 
we can collect and spread seeds of native plants, helping to maybe increase habitat and food for animals and insects, and hopefully to help their populations thrive. Thanks for watching the videos and for learning about the Oregon Vesper Sparrow with us. You can keep learning about birds by using eBird Northwest, and we look forward to having you out to Vesper Meadow sometime in the future.